Hello, welcome to Down Under and South of the Border, a show about travel, expat living, LGBTQI plus issues, love, and following me, Jacob, as I learned how to teach English as a foreign language before I moved to Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, setting up a new life for myself. Anyway, this episode, we're going to cover how I prepared for Burning Man, all the little tips and tricks I can give out to virgins out there. Virgin, virgin, burner, virgin. So, the perfect place to start for virgins out there, go to burningman.org. It's um, full of amazing information, uh, most of it useful. Uh, it's a bit of a rabbit's war on this website. Uh, but look, it's got everything that you might need. It's got a section that specifically caters for virgins. Um, it has videos, all information on camps, things like that. Uh, but I would definitely recommend checking out the section on the principles. You're going to really want to brush up on that. Uh, it'll give you an understanding of the ethos behind Burning Man. Um, ethos on... I guess how burners carry themselves on the plier and off the plier, ideally. Um, it's something you want to kind of take home with you to the default world. Default world is kind of, you know, the rest of the world, reality outside of the plier. You know, there's not going to be an exam on it, but uh, it's just a good idea to keep in mind. And it's a good way to live your life. And you probably have come across the term gifting. Uh, many potential burners and just people on the outside world, outside of the burner universe, um, you know, they they see Burning Man as, a, you know, they know it's a cashless economy, but they see it as like a barter system. It's not that. It's a gifting, gift economy. Um, so you, you offer yourself, your goods, your services, not with the hope of anything tangible in return. Um, you want to make someone's day, life, experience better in some way. Okay? So, um, it's not even kind of about them. It's about the shared experience of giving and, and receiving. Giving and receiving is a good thing. A note on gifting. Uh, if it's your first year, you're not expected to necessarily have a gift that you have to give. Um, you are the gift. Uh, just you being there, you sharing this new experience, and people kind of feed off your wonder, I guess. I don't know. And they love it. Um, that's it. If you are a masseuse, a poet, uh, I don't know. If you can, if you can create... Uh, cups out of dust. Oh my god, you would be in high demand. Uh, cups are king on the plier, believe me. Cups are king. Um, don't make just little things for the sake of it. Avoid little bits of plastic and paper. Um, don't advertise if you have a home business or something. Um, you know, if you're an artist, I suppose you could include like a website or some kind of contact, something like that, that's fine. Um, but you know, no advertisements for your home bath bomb distillery, that's not cool. So, uh, next stop, YouTube. Oh wait, you're already here. Uh, yeah, I was kind of reluctant to actually go to YouTube, I thought it'd be, you know, spoilers. But it was a good idea. Um, it gives you an idea of what to expect in terms of, you know, uh, weather conditions. Yeah, big one. Um, I was lucky in 2016 we had pretty good weather. No major dust storms. It was pretty warm the majority of the time, except the last couple of nights. Uh, but yeah, it, you know, you see what people wear. It gives you an idea of what you could wear. Not that you should be copying, go for your own style, but there are some, you know, things that you need. Uh, goggles, definitely, always wear goggles. Uh, some kind of face mask to protect, some kind of breathing apparatus, headlamp, carry it always. Uh, you need to be lit. 
you always need a light on you. You never know where you might end up, at what time. It's essential. Uh, what else? Um, shoes. You know, you could be naked. You could do whatever you want. Anything, anything goes, right? But sensible shoes, okay? Sensible shoes. What is a sensible shoe? Wars have been started online over what that is for a burner. Uh, I've seen people in thongs, flip-flops. Uh, I've seen people in heavy-duty work boots. Uh, it's, it, the, the, the range is limitless. Um, for me, I initially wore some boots, uh, steel cap boots I bought from Walmart, um, which was I actually only wore them during the setup because we had a lot of rebar everywhere and you know lifting and you know poles and heavy duty kind of work but you know as the festival started I realized they weren't practical and I decided to just try in my sneakers my runners and um, they were fine and um, yeah they did get somewhat ruined but you know uh, washed them in vinegar and water that's what you wash all your stuff with when you get home, vinegar and water, because the alkaline uh, quality of the dust, that's what you wash things with, because soap will just make it all a mess, a mess. But you'll never get your dust out of everything. I still tap my shorts and things, and if I open my camera, dust still comes out. I flew out, Sydney to LA, LA to Vegas. Vegas to Salt Lake City, Salt Lake City to Reno. I was there for three days to organize everything. Uh, it's not the, not my favorite place, Reno. I will say that. Lonely, ugly, unpleasant place. Um, but my favorite place there was Kwani Bikes. Uh, that's where I got my bike, and I loved it so much. My steed, my Bucephalus. Uh, so Kwani's, right? It's a charitable organization in Reno. Um, they teach kids and people to fix up uh, bikes and give them kind of some skill sets. And they are the most lovely people. I spent like three hours there just talking to them. Um, and what they do is um, burners, after the burn, they bring back their bikes. The dust just does, wrecks havoc on bikes. Chains, every, everything, it just ruins it. After a week, it's ruined. They bring the bikes back to Kwani's, they get refurbished, lovingly repaired, and ready for a burner to come and use it next year. So, yeah, I found them. Uh, I went in, they have hundreds of different bikes. You do have to reserve a bike, and uh, it may be a bit late for 2017, but um, check it out. Why not check it out? And, you know, future years, please get onto it. Uh, so you go in there, um, all kinds of bikes, a lot of them already decorated or half decorated or painted or something and they have all the different lights and all the different decorations as well that you can buy there too for cheaps and that's another thing, light your bike, you do not want to be a dark wad, do not be a dark wad, dark wad is someone that walks around or rides a bike at night without any lights you do that on playa, you're going to hurt someone or you're going to get really hurt. It's a big, big hazard. Do not do it. Um, anyway, so I went to Kiwani's, found my... Oh, I miss it so much. Oh, my beautiful bike. Uh, I wish I could have taken it with me, but I couldn't. I found him. He found me, I should say. And what they do that, you know, they'll adjust the seat. They'll... Uh, you know, adjust everything so it's perfect for you, the handlebars, whatever. And it was great. Uh, then, then, uh, they give you access to this special little room where past burners have dropped off stuff, all kinds of stuff from their burn. Um, tents, sleeping bags, suitcases, boots, costumes, lights, uh, kitchenware, anything you can think of. Um, yeah, I picked up a sleeping bag, I picked up a suitcase for all this new stuff. I picked up some a cutlery set that was inside the suitcase that I didn't realize was there. And a moot bag. Someone left a lo lovely moot bag full of little cigarette butts and things, which that's fine. It was a Ziploc thing. Why not? I hadn't, I didn't have one yet. 
I was going to reuse it. Why not? Uh, a couple of other things, decorations and stuff. And, um, yeah, I spent, like, a few hours there. Because, I mean, I was in Reno. There was nothing else to do. And, um, oh, Hillary was in town. I could have I could have checked that out. That would have been cool. Uh, and, again, the future that could have been... <sighs> My last key points of advice, uh, bring cups with handles, preferably, um, and carabiners. Uh, there's little uh, things that you get for climbing and different things I'm sure they have uses for. Um, clip them to your cup, clip them to your belt, uh, a piercing perhaps, a uh, necklace, whatever, whatever. But um, cups are king, as I've said, uh, and carabiners you can use for a million different things. Uh, very very useful uh, self-reliance one of the nine principles if you do join the camp don't be a glamour pony uh, glamour pony S sounds like a really cool thing right not really it's someone that kind of goes along to play dress-ups in the desert uh, without really taking in the whole aspect of self-reliance you, know, you, you do still need to bring your share of water which I believe is like a gallon and a half a day something like that which is I don't know I, I brought like uh, I don't know two big things and a gallon is for people using a normal system like liters um, it's like about that by that kind of box of water I brought two of those and that did me fine. We, you know, we had a lot of shared water and stuff too, but you do need to bring your own. It is essential. It shows that you're, you know, you're contributing. Take photos, but do remember the concept, the principle of immediacy. Uh, look, I did take photos when I was there. I took a few videos and I remember looking at it and like thinking, this looks shit. And I, I just saw no point in taking very many. Um, so I just tried to experience it. I took no photos of the man burning. I'm not even going to really talk about it because that was me. That was mine. That was for me. Um, or the temple burn. That was kind of, that was for me. Um, and I hope you get to experience your own man burning and your own temple burn and you'll know exactly what I mean um, but yeah take photos please do because you'll get home and realize after seeing how shit they are when you're on player that they're some of the best photos you've ever taken I know it's insane um, next take water with you everywhere okay you don't know where you'll end up when you leave camp um, you might hop on an art car and end up on the other side of Playa. You might not come home that night. You might end up on the deep Playa, uh, out at some rave till whenever. You might go see um, Robot Heart. Do go see Robot Heart, please. It's amazing. You might, and that's always at sunrise. Um, so you'll need water. You will need water. You may be in certain uh, states that will require extra water. So always carry that water with you. Those camel packs, they were, they're very popular. Um, I had trouble working them even when I was in a um, fairly sober state of mind. Um, but that's just me. It's just nothing coming out. I'm really good with that kind of action. I didn't know what was going on. Carry a personal moot bag with you everywhere. If you are a cool smoker like I am, uh, definitely, definitely keep it on you at all times. You don't want to see a cigarette butt around. If you do see cigarette butts or any kind of moot just lying about, just pick it up. Just uh, pick it up, put it in your moot bag, and keep on moving. Do someone a, do someone a kindness. Uh, also, um, so when, when you're coming home from the playa, if you have costumes, tents, bits and pieces that you 
aren't going to use again, uh, donate them. Give them to your fellow campers, give them to other burners. What I did, I went back to Kiwani Bikes, I gave them back my bike, um, I gave them all my costumes, all my tents, all my everything, all my camping stuff, all my camping paraphernalia. I just left with what I need for the next two months in Mexico and Cuba. And um, that was it. And, and they were very grateful for it. And I hope my gear is making, going to make someone very happy this year and in years to come. Ah, <sighs> my bike. I hope it's going to have a great adventure. And if you get my sleeping bag, you may want to turn it inside out. So remember, okay, there is no, you're not there to see a show. You're not there to be entertained. You, you are the entertainment. You are the show, okay? You are the main event. Um, so remember that and appreciate the wonderful experience you're about to have, okay? Uh, don't um, get so fucked up that you can't get out of your tent. Don't um, miss, don't miss anything. Do as much as you can because you will not see it all. You will not be able to experience it all. And um, yeah, just love, be loved and be, uh, just be yourself. Be your best self is my best advice on that department. Um, if you're feeling overwhelmed, um, Look, you may take some uh, party supplements, or you may not, and you may feel overwhelmed, because it's a pretty insane environment. It's a very extreme environment um, at the best of times. Uh, look, just talk to people, talk to more experienced burners, talk to your campmates. Um, there are many chill zones that will just, lots of, Fairy walls, <coughs> um, calm lighting, calm music, uh, where you can just nest for a little while and, and just chill. Um, if that's not enough, uh, there are many med tents to go to and they will be more than happy to sort you out. There's no doubt a plethora of things I have forgotten to mention, um, but dear Virgin, I love you. I love you. I love you so much. Um, I am so sorry that I will miss you this year in the dust. But I hope to see you on the playa in years to come. Hopefully 2018 will be our year. Um, welcome home. Uh, yeah, thanks guys for tuning in again to Down Under and South of the Border. Uh, you can subscribe. Please subscribe. Please, please, please subscribe. Um, please uh, like me on Facebook. You can. That's where all this stuff is getting wrangled. All the Instagram, the blog posts, YouTube posts, they'll all come up there. So it's a good place to, you know, keep up with what's going down. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at JacobHarrison00. Um, Instagram is Cobjack. And that's about it, really. Uh, hope you're having a good day. Good night. Uh, adios, amigos. Love you guys. Bye.